Hi folks, this is Azza News and we're bringing you the latest updated with me, Vanessa. ASEAN defense ministers meet in Cambodian capital talk about regional security. Defense ministers and delegations from the ASEAN meet in Cambodia's capital Phnom Penh for talks on regional security. Cambodian Defense Minister Thea Ban tells media that Myanmar's Defense Minister Myo Thun Oh was among those in attendance at the 16th ASEAN Defense Ministers meeting. Myanmar was invited as part of this year's team of Solidarity for Security and Harmony. Last year, ASEAN blocked officials from Myanmar's military government from joining key meetings over a failure to honor a peace plan agreed upon by the 10-member bloc. As 2020 chair of ASEAN, Cambodia has advocated engaging directly with junta generals. He adds, the war in Ukraine not only affects places in Europe, but it also affected other places globally, including the Southeast Asia region and especially our country Cambodia. It has caused the prices of goods and gasoline to hike. Indonesia departs Japan fugitive for embezzlement of COVID-19 subsidies. Indonesian immigration deports Japanese national Mitsuhiro Taniguchi, who was accused of swindling more than 7 million US dollars of government COVID-19 subsidy funds. The 47-year-old man, along with his family, are suspect of fraud by submitting thousands of false applications for the government subsidy fund and receiving more than 960 million Japanese yen, which later he used the money to start a fish farming business in Indonesia. Taniguchi wants by Tokyo police after he fled the country in October 2020 and was arrested by the Indonesian authority earlier this month for violation of immigration law after the Japanese government revoked his passport. The Japanese man appears in front of media during a brief news conference before being deported by Indonesian immigration. Researchers find a giant stingray with a size of 300 kilograms in Cambodia. A researcher says recently discovered of giant stingray measuring 300 kilograms and 3.9 meters in northern Cambodia marks the recording of the world's biggest freshwater fish. A team of international researchers and fishermen caught it, recorded and released the stingray in the Mekong River in Cambodia. The video obtained by Reuters shows the giant animal being released after a tracking device was implanted in it. The area of the Mekong River faces devastating ecological effects, according to the statement from the expedition team, which added that there were reports of a plan to build several hydropower dams in Cambodia's portion of the river. Experts also highlighted other concerns about the river face, including illegal overfishing as well as plastic waste. Minister of Defense of Japan meet with ASEAN partners in Cambodia to enhance security capabilities. Japan's Defense Minister Nobuo Kishi meet with his counterparts from the ASEAN in Cambodia as part of the 16 ASEAN Defense Ministers meeting. Myanmar's Defense Minister Mia Thun Oh was among those in attendance despite pressure from some countries in the regional bloc and pro-democracy groups to exclude the junta from such gatherings. According to the Japanese officials, quoted by the Kyoto News Agency, that details of the minister's discussion are not immediately available, but Kishi expects to talk about increasing cybersecurity capabilities. Cambodian Defense Minister Thia Ban says all 10 Southeast Asian Defense Ministers will also meet their Chinese counterpart virtually later. Increasing pollution problems in the Philippines caused by Sachet economy. Okay. 
Gloria Molina has been selling various household items for over 36 years. The 70-year-old sundry store owner in Manila noted, the most popular of all goods are those coming in tiny plastic packets or sachets. They have allowed consumer product companies to penetrate new emerging markets through sales to low-income households. But they have also helped fuel a global plastic pollution crisis that has some governments, including the Philippines, looking to limit their use. According to a 2019 study by Environment Group, the Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives that, a staggering 163 million sachets, are used every day, many swept out to sea by garbage-strewn rivers flowing through overcrowded cities like Manila. Meanwhile, legislation banning single-use plastic items has been introduced in Congress but has been languishing despite repeated calls by environment groups. Alternative legislation requiring consumer brands to contribute to the cost of collecting and disposing of plastic waste has been ratified and awaiting signature from the president. A regular 200 ml bottle of shampoo costs around $2, while a 10 ml single-use sachet costs around $0.50 cents in the Philippines. Despite total costs for sachets being higher than bottles, people who live in meager daily wages cannot afford to buy in bulk. Maria Rosario Garcia is one of a group of professors from the University of Santo Tomas who's conducted a study on the social and environmental components of plastic pollution in Manila Bay in 2021. Garcia adds, the government should not rush to ban single-use plastic outright as industry needs time to develop sustainable low-cost packaging for the poor. The Philippines Department of Environment and National Resources did not reply to Reuters' request for comments on how effectively laws have been enforced. Japan court rules same-sex marriage ban is not unconstitutional. The Japanese court rules that a ban on same-sex marriage was not unconstitutional, dealing a setback to LGBTQ rights activists in the only group of seven nations does not allow people of the same gender to marry. The Osaka court says that marriage was defined as being only between opposite genders and not enough debate on same-sex marriage had taken place in Japanese society. IT company worker Soichiro Yamada says Tokyo locals who heard the news showed sympathy towards the LGBTQ community. Society is becoming more diverse, but the movement regarding LGBTQ are different from overseas. I'm thinking, what's wrong with Japan? The ruling Dash's activist hopes of raising pressure on the central government after a court in the city of Sapporo in March 2021 decided in favor of a claim that not allowing same-sex marriage was unconstitutional. South Korea moves space rocket to launch pad before lift off. South Korea is set for a second test of launch of its domestically produced Nuri space rocket eight months after the first test successfully blasted off but failed to place a dummy satellite into orbit. The three-stage Kessel V Nuri rocket, designed by the Korea Space Research Institute to eventually put on 1.5-ton payloads into orbit 600 to 800 km above the Earth, is a cornerstone of the country's plans to jumpstart its space program and achieve ambitious goal in 6G networks, spy satellites and even lunar probes. It has solely Korean rocket technologies and is the country's first domestically built space launch vehicle. South Korea's last such booster, launched in 2013 after multiple delays and several failed tests, was jointly developed with Russia. Chinese diplomat calls for joint efforts to eliminate negative impact of colonialism legacy. The representative of China at the meeting of the 50th regular session of the Human Rights Council says all parties should work together to eliminate the negative impacts of colonialism on human rights. Of colonialism, to eliminate its negative impact. Cheng Shu, Chinese permanent representative to UN office in Geneva, says at a meeting that colonialism once brought devastating disasters to the world. Its legacies have lingered on widely till this day and have imprinted a serious impact on human rights, especially in developing countries. 
Kesha Niamh-Maguire, chair of the special committee on the colonization, echoed this, noting that to this day, there are still about 1.6 million people living under the shadow of colonialism. The international community should respect the people of non-self-governing territories and their choice of politics, economy, social and cultural development path. The representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea says colonialism has not been fully eliminated as seeing as the US and some other countries attempt to meddle in the internal affairs of others with the excuse of human rights. Professor Tsang Wan Hong from Wuhan University and other scholars from countries including South Africa, India, Zimbabwe all noted that the United States, United Kingdom and some other European countries committed genocide during the era of colonization, bringing devastation to the local people. They also called the UN Human Rights Council and other relevant agencies to pay more attention to the negative impacts of colonialism on human rights. And that's the end for today. We'll be back soon with the latest news. See you.